Hello, everyone, and welcome back to today's video. We are going to be answering a question that many, many, many of you guys have asked us, and that is, what is the difference between OneDrive and SharePoint? So let's get into it. So many of you ask us this question, and let's get just really into the satellite view, Kaylee, to kind mm -hmm. of compare the difference. Yeah. SharePoint. So share in the name indicates that's what you're doing. So mm -hmm. anything that you put into the SharePoint uh, is going to be shared with everybody in your organization, not by default on the internet, but everybody inside your organization. So it's great if you have, uh, for example, sales figures you want everybody to see or like template files or forms that you have. It's a great place to put that. Everybody in your organization can see it. It's kind of like a public drive on a network. Mm -hmm. So SharePoint is great for that. One drive, one, that person you, is really meant for you, that yeah. one person. So the information that you put in there is really by default, only you can see it. So this is great for you redirecting your one, like your My Documents or your desktop there so that if your computer were to crash, you can have it. Mm. But... OneDrive also has the ability for you to share, just like you do with SharePoint, to share to other people, either inside or outside your organization. Now, SharePoint can also share outside the organization as well, but its focus is really about sharing information internally for your group, um, but it still has that outward sharing capability because, like, that's the world we live in today, so you really need to have that. Yeah. Now, it's important to remember that SharePoint is uh, and OneDrive is included with most 365 subscriptions. Mm -hmm. And some of you may be wondering, well, where does this exist? Well, SharePoint and OneDrive exist in Microsoft's cloud so that you can not have a dependency on a local machine like you do with a server. So if it were, you know, if your local server were to crash, the information on it would be possibly lost. Whereas with SharePoint and OneDrive, it's in Microsoft's cloud. So any information you put there, if your computer were to crash, as long as it was stored there, you'd be able to get it back very easily. Uh, right. Now, Microsoft has a client that sits on your computer if you decide to use that methodology, which will help you have access to that data offline, which will show you some of those features uh, in just a second, which is a really nice thing because what that allows you to do is Say, for example, you want to access information that's either in SharePoint or OneDrive, and you're going to be on a plane, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to, it's a long plane uh, flight that could be several hours, and you want to have access to that information offline. If you put the sync client on your computer, it will go to the cloud, pull the information down, and you can choose what part of it you always want to have resident on your computer, which mm -hmm. gives you this powerful ability of accessing the data offline, but then the agent is responsible for sending that data once you have internet so that everybody can still access it. So it, yeah. it kind of is the best of both worlds. So the sync client is very powerful and something I highly recommend. Let's get into some of the features and see what the differences are. First, we want to just focus on OneDrive and then we'll switch to SharePoint. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the Let's look at my, <laughs> what, what are we looking at here? What are we uh, looking at, Dad? <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> Tell us what we're looking at. So first, we're going to focus on OneDrive. So let's look at what I'm sharing out here. So as you can see here, I, I have uh, one, two OneDrives, which is not normal. You would have that. Uh, but this is my real OneDrive, and this is the demo one that I have set up. So traditionally, mm -hmm. you would just have one. And you can tell it because it says OneDrive-Axiom, which is nice about that because that lets you know this is your corporate one. Because to make things even more confusing, uh, Microsoft allows you to kind of have your own personal OneDrive that is free that you have like for your personal email address. So like your Hotmail or something like that. That's also called OneDrive. And so it causes some confusion. Um, so to try to help eliminate that confusion, it'll put the company name, but if it's your personal one, behind it, it'll say like what your personal email address is or your name. All right. So in here, it, this, this is what's called the sync client. Um, and so what happens is, is I have, um, you can see I have two of these running. This is the one that's the demo one that I have. Um, but it's, this is the client that I'm referring to. Mm -hmm. Now you can still access the information by just going to a web browser. So uh, as you can see here, this information on this web browser here, is the same thing as the sync client, the client that's pulling the information down to my local computer. Mm -hmm. So people that are very used to like map drives or things like that, because they work in an organization, 
Um, the sync client is really great because it creates that local feel that you're having and you're not having to open a web browser like I have here. But, you know, I've just gone to uh, my company, uh, 365, logged in with my account, um, and then I have access to this. So as you can see, it's the same thing. And if I created a new file here, it would immediately show up over here on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm just, the reason why I'm showing you this is it's just the same thing, just different ways to access it. So I'm accessing it from a web browser here. And then I'm using the sync client running off of the little agent that's running on my machine. Um, if you're, you can just basically go to Microsoft and download this agent if you don't have it on your box. Um, it's highly suggested that you only stay on Windows 10 or higher on this because obviously Windows 7 isn't say isn't supported anymore, um, and it's just kind of glitchy in general. Uh, but the newer versions, and you want to make sure that your Windows 10 is up to date, uh, and it really helps solve a lot of those issues. And it makes the synchronization work really well when you're using the sync client. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's really important here, Kaylee, is this sync icon right here that you have. Mm -hmm. So this is probably the easiest way for you to get this to show up on your computer, right? Yeah. So you download the agent that, that puts this here, but it won't have anything set up when you do that, unless you put in your email address and start doing those types of things. Uh, so what's nice is uh, one thing that you can do is... Uh, pay attention to this little sync button uh, because it can really help you with making sure that whatever you're looking at, if you want it to show up to your agent here, you just hit that and a boom, it'll start pulling that information in. Right, um, right. So that's so, what that sync is for. So when you're on the web browser version, you can right. click on that sync button and that is how you get that information onto your desktop itself locally. Bingo. Okay. You got it. So then that's nice. Now that it's nice when you go to do the installation of the agent, one of the things it'll ask you for is what's your email address, what's your password, and it will automatically start to try to sync your OneDrive, which is mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. um, so that is something that you can do. But if you didn't do that, if you skipped it and you don't have it set up, this is a quick way to get it. You would just basically click this, click your OneDrive. It will, it's going to bring you to this page here. And then you just hit sync and then yeah. boom, it, what it does is it sends a little file to that agent and says, Hey, here's the config, go ahead and start the setup. And then it'll ask you for a password. Right. Once you put the correct one in, it will start syncing. And you can even do this by clicking into certain folders as well to only sync those certain folders. Right. Um, yes. So what she's referring to here is like, say for example, this notebook section here, I have it. See, this is what these icons mean little circle with a check means that this file or this folder is saved locally on my machine. In other words, if I unplug the internet connectivity right now, I could access anything in this notebooks folder. Mm -hmm. But these would still show up. But if I tried to click on this documents file here, it would just say, sorry, it's on the cloud and you don't have access to the cloud right now because you have no internet access, it's not going to work. So Kaylee, what do you think the difference is between the solid green and the light green? I honestly don't know. Would it be like maybe something on the uh, web browser side that's different between those two? No, so what it's doing is it's telling you that this one, even though it's local, this folder, um, it's saved on this machine. So if I lost internet access, I would still be able to access it, but it's eligible to be ejected off the machine. In other words, cleaned up, removed in free space. So <clears throat> it's the system, this little agent is really intelligent that if it notices that you keep accessing cer certain files, it's not going to keep it in the cloud. It's going to keep it on your local machine. Hmm. But if you stop using it after a week or so, it goes, you know, he or she hasn't really used this file in a while. I'm going to go ahead and just allow it to be cloud only and free up space on your box. Oh, so, so it does it for you sort of thing. Yeah. So it's, so that's where you could be connected to you know, potentially to a terabyte storage, but you might only use 200 megs. Right. Right. You know, or a gig of space on your local machine because you've only, it's only keeping what you're really actively using out of that terabyte of data. So that pretty much covers most of the things that we want to talk about for this video, because I don't want to go into a lot of depth, but I do want to show something right here and just kind of give you a little taste. So let's look at this. Um, one of the things that's important is you see this little accounting, little icons, how that's different, Kaylee? Yep. So what I've done is this accounting folder isn't actually in my OneDrive. This is actually a SharePoint library right. or a folder inside a SharePoint library. And I wanted access to that to show up in my OneDrive. Why would I want to do that, Kaylee? 
Well, I would assume you would want maybe just a, a little bit of the SharePoint folder, but not really everything that's in the SharePoint right. uh, site. So you can kind of create your own personal list of everything that you really want to access. Bingo. Yeah, you get it. Um, so if I click up here, which is what SharePoint looks like. So this is SharePoint libraries that I have synced. And you see, I have this new client onboarding. Mm -hmm. Now I'm, I don't want to, you know, maybe I'm always going to this one specific folder, right? Yeah. Inside the onboarding. And I don't want to keep nesting and working my way through here. So one of the tricks that you can do is uh, there's a video that we have a link, which I'll put in the description. Yeah. I'm just wanting to talk strategy here at this point is you could create a link from that library into your OneDrive. And what's right. really nice is you can kind of create this perfect OneDrive that you have that has access to all of the SharePoint libraries as well as your own OneDrive that you really care about. Yeah. Um, and it just makes one-stop shop. Another nice feature about that is, say you get a new computer, right? And you go to swap to another box. Mm -hmm. Well, when you go to add your OneDrive to that, it will bring over all of this configuration that you so have. So nice. So which nice. is so nice. Now, if everything is based on you just having access to the fact that you've added these, you're going to have to re-add all of these One OneDrive and SharePoint connections to these different sites, which can be a little time consuming. But if you've spent the time and created the links that you want inside your OneDrive, all you have to do is add OneDrive and all of your SharePoint libraries that you care about are already there. Right. So it's a really cool feature. Yeah, that's great. So now I want to talk to you guys about SharePoint. Now, SharePoint is not just about the files and the folders. It right. is about creating a site for your team. It's basically a hub that you can use internally for not just your documents, your files, your folders, but even communication and things like that. So consider SharePoint as like your own internal site for your team. So I would love to show you guys a little bit about SharePoint today and some of the features, but I would love to also create a video for you guys to show you how to create the most efficient and effective site for your team on SharePoint. So we'll do that in another video, but today let me show you a few features. All right, so if you guys can see my screen, this is our Axiom demo site, okay? This is the home page. You, every time you create a site under SharePoint for your team, it's going to do a few things automatically. One, it's going to automatically want to share it with your whole organization. And two, it's going to create a home page for you to start. Okay. So it will walk you through that process, which I'll show you in, an, in another video in detail on how to make sure you can make those changes if needed while creating the site. But here is what our homepage looks like. And see, if you notice here, peep the accounting folder mm -hmm. that Bobby was talking about previously that he actually linked from SharePoint to his um, desktop itself. So there right. it is there. So what you can do here is edit this home page, just like you could a website to basically make this look exactly how you want for your team. And the way that you would do this is obviously you would need admin privileges for the site first. Okay. Right. So I'll talk about how you can get those in a, in a future video, but I have those right now. So if you have admin privileges, you will see this edit button in the top right-hand corner. When you do that, it pulls up this way to edit the page. You can move things around like this, right? So let's say I wanted it actually on this side, okay? And then I had a bunch of my activity on this side, or then maybe I wanted to bring it back over here. Here it is back over here. So these are all little you know, um, little grids that you can move around and place exactly where you would like them to be. And you can even add them, like add more sections in the mm -hmm. top left by clicking this button and you can just really make it your own. And um, I just love this because I feel like every organization can benefit from organization. <laughs> so... <laughs> I mean, that's just, it, that's it. You know, you know what those, that plus with the pods kind of reminds me of Kaylee hmm. teams, 
like how you can add different pieces. So, yeah. you know, SharePoint's got that capability of where you can add additional pods that may not have because that documents is just a documents library but you right. can add lots of other feeds of things exactly. and stuff that you want to that site which is very powerful so kind of like you're saying it it doesn't have to be just about documents it could be about um, information yeah totally because this and, could be a calendar right you could you could have like yeah. a, a vacation calendar here for oh a hundred percent you can add many different um things to this by just if you press this plus button, wherever you would like to add something, you could add a button that will trigger an event to happen. Let's say one time I saw this on a YouTube video and if I find that video, I'll link it down below, but they had a big red button. That's what they called it at the top of their screen, which is basically like a something really bad is happening. Let's call the whole team into a team's meeting. And when you press that button, it would trigger a team's meeting for the entire organization that was like, this is mayday, mayday. That signal. Yeah, not good. <laughs> and, and I just think that that's so cool that you can really, really edit this to, to exactly how you'd like. And if you have a YouTube channel like we do, we could even link it here for your team to watch some right. training videos that you're creating. Great you could point. change the text. You can make it very branded. You know, all of that stuff. So this is a lot different in OneDrive in this way because OneDrive yeah. is very simplistic because it's needed. You know, it's just for you. It's mostly just your personal right. documents. And, it, and it's just about your files, really. It's about your it's files. What, yeah, what OneDrive yeah. is. A hundred percent. This is way more. You know, this is really getting a connection going with your team. One last thing that I want to say before we close in this video is that both OneDrive and SharePoint connect very well to Microsoft Teams. If you see up here, there's a little Teams icon that's saying, hey, this site is connected to a Teams channel. Do you want to yes. go over there and check out the channel? And I'm like, yeah, I'd love to. Okay. And that's important to do because like how I was explaining those automations that you can do with like the big red button, you know, and setting up that Microsoft Teams meeting to, uh, to alert everyone. You you need to have those connected uh, for, for that to occur. Right. And word of caution, once you've created a SharePoint library like you like Kaylee has done here, if you make that library inside SharePoint first, mm -hmm. it's not going, it, it's very difficult to link it to your Teams channel. Right. So if you know that you're making a site that you, let's just say you want to use the, the web portion of like what Kaylee's talking about, still make it first in Teams. Go mm -hmm. ahead, make it in Teams because then you'll have that link in the top left-hand corner, which Kaylee just showed you. Mm -hmm. And then you can go to SharePoint and start the editing yes. and start doing the modifications, but you'll have that link already established. Exactly. And it's so much easier when you do it that way. If you have to do it the other way, it gets complicated. So I hope you really enjoyed this summarization. We tried not to go into very much detail. I think some of you may be watching this video wishing we had, but mm -hmm. Kaylee's going to go ahead and link some of that information so you can get, as well as she's going to make some additional content about this. Um, SharePoint and OneDrive, you could, you could do a whole week long class on SharePoint, <laughs> as well yeah. as even to some extent about OneDrive. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really important to understand the high satellite view of the differences between the two. Then once you start to understand the strategy and technique of using both correctly, it makes it so much easier. You're not trying to swim upstream when you're trying to accomplish things mm -hmm. and it just works out so much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed us answering your question on what is the difference between OneDrive and SharePoint. Make sure to hit that notification bell yes. and subscribe to our channel if you want to be notified anytime we upload a new video. And also check out our Discord channel, which will be linked in the description below if you want to be updated on our newest topics and put your input into our channel and give us recommendations, which will be yeah, really so cool. It's, it's much easier to communicate back and forth through Discord. Totally, totally. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.